I bet that you've been brainwashed. In school, it's hugely counterproductive to learn something only one time, and yet that's usually how it goes. Our current system is broken, and I'm gonna prove it. Do you care about learning? or do you really just care about getting a good grade? I believe that our current system only teaches students to care about good grades. They don't actually care about learning. And the reason this happens is because of a system of fear that's been put in place by the US education system. Students try and get good grades out of fear of not doing well in school, which can hurt their chance of success. There's a fallacy that students believe that they are a good student if they do all of the work and they get good grades because good grades mean good students, right? But what is a good student? I believe that our system defines a good student as someone who gets good grades, but that doesn't necessarily mean that these students need to remember the information over a long period of time. That's to say that our students were able to prove they knew information at the time that they were being assessed, but they don't need to know it beyond their final exam. And it's really hard to remember all that information for those final exams based on the way that we teach. I believe that we should have a system that values students who don't forget information so that they can then use that information to go and help society. It all starts with this idea of the forgetting curve, or more specifically, the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. Erming Ebbinghaus was a German psychologist who founded the study of the forgetting curve. He did research that tested his own memory and wrote down and recorded what he forgot and how long it took him to forget. He also learned that we can prevent the leakage of information if we reinforce that information as we learn. And we also learned that certain information is stickier in the brain, where if a story really resonates with what you already know and you're able to incorporate it with multiple senses, the more senses you incorporate, the stronger that memory is going to be because the more you're able to relate it to what you already know. I'll tell you a story about how I suffered loss and you've suffered loss, you're going to relate and you're going to be able to remember that better because the way in which it's stuck in your brain, how the filing system in your brain works, your memory is going to categorize it and relate it to what you know so you're better able to remember it as it's a stickier memory. Real science backs this up and Ehrman forgot 90% of what he originally learned after only a month. He also found that we generally forget 60% of what we learned within the first 20 minutes of hearing a concept. Like most of the information we learn over the next eight hours, we forget unless it's reinforced. And then after those eight hours, it kind of just evens out. The important thing to know is the process of forgetting can be disrupted. We can stop ourselves from forgetting with the right technique. What this teaches us is that in school, it's hugely counterproductive to learn something only one time. And yet that's usually how it goes. Make that information sticky, it needs to be regularly reinforced. Teacher presents you information and a week later, most of that you've already forgotten. Especially by the time finals come around. Sound familiar? So if we can fight the forgetting curve, then why don't we? Well, the problem is that in school, when I was in school, and I think still in school, teachers are abstracting that job. They try to do the heavy lifting for us where they give us homework to give us one of those repetitions to fight the forgetting curve. Homework was a system that was created in order to help students to fight the fighting curve to prevent them from forgetting what they learned, which happens naturally due to the brain's leakage. And then even worse, they create a system of grading to make sure that system of space repetition of homework happens so that you would do the space repetitions, which means that you didn't forget stuff. The whole reason this happened was because teachers were getting punished for students doing poorly on their tests. In other words, teachers were being punished for not being able to prevent students from forgetting. Wait a second. The system of grading is being used because it works through fear to make students do the job that they were supposed to do. Not forget stuff. Not forgetting is what we call learning. Teachers were being punished for letting students forget stuff, which doesn't even make any sense. At some point, we all bought into this myth that a teacher's job is to make a student not forget. According to neuroscience in the forgetting term, we know that only the learner can prevent themselves from forgetting. So why was that job given to the teachers? From a student's perspective, just listening to a teacher and going through the curriculum is not enough. Having teachers be in charge of a student not forgetting is like having doctors be in charge of you not getting sick. And that doesn't make any sense. Doctors can help prevent you from getting sick with the vaccines. They can help you by giving you strategies, but they can't prevent you from getting sick. Knowing all this, how do we disrupt the forgetting curve? How do we not forget stuff? If students are taught 
that they need to actively plan before learning to not forget stuff and that they're able to, then they're going to be able to do the job and we don't have to abstract it to teachers with stuff like homework that makes them get that spaced repetition. Students need to be aware of the forgetting curve. Teachers can be in charge of presenting what to learn and when to learn, but it is the learner's job to actively not forget with a plan, having knowledge of the forgetting curve so that they don't forget using neuroscience to make sure that they keep that information. Down to the good stuff. So how do we actually prevent ourselves from forgetting stuff? Obviously learners can prevent themselves from forgetting with reinforcement and repetition. But if you just brute force trying to memorize everything, that's not going to be effective. And some people just read their notes and study and it doesn't help them getting a good grade. So what should we do? Well, we can fight that with engaging activities by asking great questions, by using our curiosity to then dig into that information and go down a rabbit hole. But let's study the curve right now to take a look how long should we wait until we get our next repetition and then we can talk about what type of repetitions we should use. So the green line over here represents what we would remember after a lecture if we were able to remember absolutely everything, which we know is not true. The blue line on the other hand over here showcases what we would know if we really left a lecture, probably around 75% of what we heard. So the green curve over here is showcasing an idyllic situation, blue curve is probably reality. Now, if we were to take into account beating the curve, in order to beat the curve, as soon as we start forgetting, we want a repeat of that information over here. So the way to beat the curve is multiple reviews of the information. We can see over here, if we review immediately after class, we're gonna review before we forgot too much of the information. If we review again within 24 hours for a second time, when the memory starts dropping again, we're going to instead get that repeat of the information. And then within a week, if we review it another time, as that starts dropping off, we get that repeat of the information. And then after one month, if we repeat it for a fourth time, we're gonna get that repeat of the information, which keeps our remembering of that between 80% to 100%. So, in order to not forget, we need to review on average four times. And review doesn't just mean reading. So the curve has power. Four repetitions spaced out along a month with certain time intervals can help you prevent yourself from forgetting stuff. So if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, give it a thumbs up, and be sure to stay tuned. Our next video is gonna be about spaced repetition and specific strategies you can use to remember information much better without forgetting. Thanks for watching.